Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of a little further maths. Here we're looking at the roots of cortex this time so we can answer questions from exercise 4c. So we're going to be doing exactly the same in this video as we have in the previous two. We're going to be forming equations that link the coefficients on the cortic equation with the roots of the cortic equation. So just as we did previously we're going to write out a formula that links together the coefficients on the polynomial and given that they have roots alpha, beta, gamma and delta this time, a bracket x minus alpha, x minus beta, x minus gamma and x minus delta, that means that alpha, beta, gamma and delta will be roots of this quadratic equation here. And then what we do is we expand to create these formulas. I'm not going to go through this too much, I'm just going to summarise at the end. Divide through by a... You can have a go at this yourself. And this is what we get. So from expanding the quadratic, from expanding not the quadratic, from expanding the quartic, what we get is a formula for the coefficients on the x cubed, which is b over a equals minus alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta, or in other words, minus b over a equals alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta. So this is effectively the sum of the single roots equals minus b over a. For the coefficient on the x squared term, it's going to be c over a equals the sum of the doubles, which is what we've seen before. For the coefficient on the x, on the x term, that's going to be d over a equals minus bracket alpha beta gamma plus alpha beta delta plus alpha gamma delta plus beta gamma delta. So this is effectively um, take three of the roots and multiply them by each other in in all of the three in all of the four different ways that you can possibly do that. So in this case here we're missing delta. In this case here we're missing gamma. In this case here we're missing beta and in this case here we're missing alpha. So it's the sum of the triples effectively, sum of three of the roots together in all the different combinations that that can happen. And remember the d has a negative in front of it just like the b does. So we've got some of the singles here, some of the doubles here, some of the triples here and the last one is all four of the roots multiplied together equals e over a. So notice here how we have negative for cubic, positive for c over a, uh, negative for d over a, and positive for e over a. Another way that you can write this sum of the singles is the sum of alpha. This here would be the sum of the doubles, so alpha beta. This here would be sigma alpha beta gamma, the sum of the triples but this here would just be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Now this here is not necessarily just saying sum alpha together, it's saying it's using alpha to represent all of the different roots. Here alpha, beta is representing all of the different ways in which um, two of the roots can be multiplied together. This here is representing all of the different ways that three of the roots can be multiplied together and summing them all up. Okay, so it's the sum of the triples for minus d of a, sum of the doubles for c of a, and sum of the singles for minus b of a. And then all four of them together is e over a. So as before, it's minus b over a for the single roots. That's, that's going to happen across all of the different roots that you'll all the different cubics, quartics, and quadratics that you'll see. c over a is always doubled up. So that's no matter whether it's quadratic, cubic, or or quartic, it's always two roots at a time together. D over A is always a negative, and it's always three of the roots times together in all the different ways possible. In quadratics, that doesn't happen because there aren't three roots. In cubics, that only happens once because there are only three roots. But in quartics here, it happens four different ways. And E over A here only appears with cortex and it's just all four roots times together. Okay, so we can see them all compared here. We can see here we've got the sum of the singles, no matter which 
type of quadrat type of uh, polynomial you're working with is always minus b over a. The sum of the doubles is always c over a, no matter whether you're working in any of the polynomials. Minus d over a is always the sum of the triples, whether you're working in cubics or quartics. And then the sum of the quadruples would be alpha, beta, gamma, delta equals e over a. Okay, so that there is a nice little summary of all of the formulas that you're going to need to remember for this chapter. Right, let's have a go at a problem then. And it's a problem that mixes together um, finding the roots and finding the quadratics because what we've got here is we've already got some of the coefficients. We've got two at the front there. We've got minus 60 here. We've got a one at the front here, so A is one, but we've got C as P and D as Q. Um, it could be, it definitely says here that P and Q are real, but it says that the com the, the solutions to this uh, equation or the roots of this equation could be complex. And certainly gamma is complex and delta is complex. Now, the gamma star here just refers to the complex conjugate of um, gamma. So that would be minus 2 minus 4i. And we've got these two questions here. Show that alpha plus beta minus 2 equals 0 and alpha beta plus 3 equals 0. So how do we show this? Well, this first part here looks like it's adding the roots together. So let's go ahead and use the first formula where we're just adding the roots together. So we've got alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta equals minus b over a. Substitute those values in. We know some of them, we don't know all of them. So alpha plus beta, we don't know. Gamma, we know. Delta, we also know. That's just the complex conjugate. Equals minus 2 over 1. That's b over a minus 2 over 1. Simplify this together, we can see here that the um, 4i and the negative 4i will cancel. Okay, and then we can add 2 to both sides and we get what we first want to show. The next um, part of the question that we want to show here looks like it's the sum of the doubles. Um, yeah, let's go with sum of the doubles. Nope, let's go with times all four of them together. So in this case here, uh, it's going to be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. We're going to times all of these together. So it's going to be alpha, beta, and then minus 2 times plus 4i, minus 2 minus 4i equals minus 60 over 1, e over a. So here when we expand this expression here, we're going to get 20 equals minus 60, so alpha beta times 20 equals minus 60. We can see where this is going now. Divide by 20 and add 3 onto the other side, and you get alpha beta plus 3 equals 0. So that's how we've shown these two expressions here. Part B is to hence find all of the roots and, the, and solve for the values P and Q. Well, if we're given that alpha plus beta minus 2 equals 0, what we should be able to do there is rearrange that and then we can substitute it into the second equation. Effectively, we've got one linear equation, one quadratic equation here. So we're effectively solving a pair of quadratic um, simultaneous equations. Substitute them in and we're just going to rearrange and find out the value of b now. So beta is either equal to 3 or minus 1. So therefore, when you work backwards up to this point here, substituting them in to work out alpha, we either get minus 1 or 3. So therefore, we just have to pick whether, whether alpha or beta is going to be 3 or minus 1. We effectively have two pairs of roots here. So we've just got 3 and minus 1. They can either represent alpha or beta if we want them to. Now we've got to work out P and Q. Okay, so now we've got, effectively, this is variable C here, and this is variable D here, so we'll use the formula for the sum of the doubles here that has C in it. So, in this case here, we've got a lot of work to do here, a lot of cancelling out uh, eventually. So we're going to have the sum of all of the doubles, how they are multiplied together um, in each of the um, different possible ways that we have them there, equals P over A. A was just 1, so it's just P over 1. 
simplify what we've got here. So this whole of this left hand side here simplifies to 9. So 9 is the value of p. And for q, the way that we work out q, that's going to be the sum of the triples here. Because if you work out in the positions, that's position A, that's position B, that's position C. This one here for Q is position D, so we need the formula with D in it. Okay, so the sum of the triples, substitute all of the values in. It's going to be minus Q over 1 this time, because that's what the formula involves, a minus Q over 1. Simplify what we've got here. Um, and we get minus 52 equals Q. Alright, and so that's all we have time for in this video here. We're not going to go through a problem because the problems in this Cortex video are just way too long. Um, so have a go at lots of questions from exercise 4C independently. You've seen one of the questions appear here. Um, but they do take a lot of time. Do persevere through them. Um, make sure you're being accurate as you go along with your algebra because you don't want to have find, found out that you've made a small algebraic mistake as you've gone along. Um, but challenge yourself. Have a go at the problems. Have a look at the um, solution bank as well. Um, that's really good to, to make sure you're going along the right sort of steps. Um, and make sure yeah, you remember the four formulas that you need to use. If one of the formulas is not particularly working out, try a different formula, try a different approach. That's, that sometimes works as well. All right then, thanks very much for watching.